Let's see. Let's see. What do we want to talk about today? Man, so many choices to choose from. So many different games to talk about. <sighs> Let's see. Hmm. Ah, uh, I think I know what I'll talk about. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yes. Hey everyone, Sean here, and today I am talking about a game that really doesn't get talked about a whole lot from a franchise that is all but forgotten and was evident that if the company behind it had applied it to a different property that you could have something very special. And that is Onimusha Blade Warriors. So the Onimusha series debuted on the PS2. It came after the success of Resident Evil, but before Devil May Cry. And it was more of an action fantasy survival horror type series. Now, I will be the first to admit, I have not divulged into the series. I actually have not played any of them outside of this title. I've heard a lot of really good things, but was just something I didn't get into, which was kind of odd because it seems like the kind of series I would be into. But I picked this one up. At first, I just rented it, and then later I wound up buying it. And this game is basically Onimusha meets Smash Brothers, in a manner of speaking. It is an arena-style fighter with different areas that you can battle and stuff like that. You have many different characters from the Onimusha universe that are available in this game. And not only that, but you had, of course, your typical unlockables and stuff like that. This is a game I've had a lot of fun with over the years, and I played it quite a bit when I got it. I just wound up having a lot of fun with it. And like I said, I'm not the biggest Onimusha fan. I like I said, I never divulged into the series, but I wound up having a lot of fun with the characters and stuff like that. And I liked the kind of the tongue in cheek nature of it all. It's a great game. It's a lot of fun. And it was different from what Capcom's usual foray into fighting games tended to be. Which was, of course, your Street Fighters and so forth. So. One of the unlockables in this game. And there's actually two unlockable characters in particular that were and weren't surprising, but I guess it kind of gave evidence that maybe this style game should be applied somewhere else. And you that was Zero from the Mega Man X series, more specifically his variation from the re from the Zero series, which was coming out at that time, and Mega Man NT, or a.k.a. Battle Network Mega Man. And, of course, that was just really, really awesome to unlock in the game. 
And so it leads me to where I think this game really should have focused on. Although I understand why they went with the Onimusha at the time. And that is, of course, Mega Man. I could always talk about Mega Man. That I mean, that much is evident. But where I think Capcom really dropped the ball amongst many, many times that they have dropped the ball, because let's be honest, they have many big video game companies have. But in this case, where I feel they dropped the ball was in in a Mega Man Arena style fighting game. The Mega Man series itself lends itself perfectly to this style of game. From the wide, and I do mean very wide, roster of characters. Just in the original series alone, that's not even taking into account the various spin-offs, whether it's X, Battle Network, Star Force, Legends. And you have a game that's just made to print money. But... It's also kind of evident where Capcom, there are times where they don't necessarily care the most about their classic properties. Mega Man is, like I said, it's, it's the perfect franchise for this style of game. And while, yes, there are fan community games that divulge in this idea, as well as others. The most notable one that comes to mind for me is Robot Master Tournament. This game demonstrated that Capcom could do that style of game and that it would work. But, fact of the matter is, they didn't want to. And maybe it's just because, as time has passed, Mega Man, as much as there is a lot of nostalgic value to it, may not necessarily be the biggest selling property for that company. Although, the re-releases they know will sell. And that's kind of a shame because especially in today's day and age, a game like that could come out and I know a lot of people are not going to be like to hear this, but just think of the amounts of DLC that would be available for it. So let's say they they decide to make this game. The core game would probably feature Mega Man 1, 2, and 3 characters. You know, probably at first you have Mega Man base, Proto Man, yada yada yada. Unlock other characters from we'll say 2 and 3 as you play through. Maybe even have Now, probably not like any of the Mega Man killers at, at least at first. So you just you focus on one, two, and three. With right off the bat, have the Mega Man One Robot Masters as well as your protagonists, and then you get to the first batch of DLC, and it would be say four, five, and six. Well, now you have a much larger cast of characters that people can play with and and then even if they didn't want to do it all at once they could probably bundle it later but say four then five then six Mega Man Killers 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then if you really wanted to get crazy, of course, you could flat do Mega Man 5 on the Game Boy. I mean, you get the idea. You can wind up with a fighting game, an online fighting game for that matter, because let's, let's be honest, a game like this, you have to be able to play online with just a huge amount of characters and limitless potential for DLC. And if you don't think that something like this would work, especially with an overwhelming amount of DLC, all you got to do is look at games like Dragon Ball Fighters, which has a ton of DLC, unlockable fighters, stuff like that. Smash Brothers, another great example. I mean, they rolled out season passes with new characters that they brought out on a semi-regular basis. I mean, that's just, that's the era we live in, in regards to gaming. And while I would love to see a new Mega Man platformer game come out, I also think a game like this has limitless potential. And if it were to be successful enough, I mean, shit. Be a good reason to bring back the franchise. I mean, the fan base is still there. You know, but... Companies like Capcom, they... They know where their focus is at. And it's... Maybe not always what us... Nostalgic, old-school gamers... Would like it to be. And... You know, it is what it is. And anyway, that's it for today. I wanted to talk a little bit about Onimusha Blade Warriors and, well, a game that I feel would have been better suited for that style of game. That. Thank you for listening to me ramble on about this, and I will catch you next time. If you have played this game, comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you haven't, check it out. So, all right, guys. Talk to you later.